Here are a few of the most inspiring life transformation stories. Number 7. J.K. Rowling Joanne Rowling, known under her pen name J.K. Rowling, has been responsible for bringing a lot of magic into the world of her Harry Potter readers. She's one of the best-selling authors of all time. How much money does the best-selling author make? Let's just say with everything combined, which means not just books, she's managed to acquire billions of dollars. That's billions with a B. In an extremely smart move, Rowling keeps private. There is no official record of her earnings. As a matter of fact, she might actually not be a billionaire just because she has been donating a lot of her money. Hey, I certainly can't hate on that. Quite an amazing run, isn't it? But of course, before she started introducing magic into everyone else's lives, she needed the help of a magic wand herself. Seven years after graduating from university, Rowling saw herself as a failure. But she described her failures as liberating, which allowed her to focus on writing. She started out so slow that at one point in her life, she was living on welfare in a tiny apartment with her daughter, who was a toddler at the time. She has shared multiple times that during a period of seven years where she was writing Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, she went through a difficult phase, the death of her own mother, a difficult separation from her then husband in which a restraining order was involved, and having to raise her daughter as a single mother. Rowling's mother, Anne, died after 10 years of suffering from multiple sclerosis. Rowling was writing Harry Potter at the time and had never told her mother about it. Her death heavily affected Rowling's writing, and she channeled her own feelings of loss by writing about Harry's own feelings of loss in greater detail in the first book. During this period, she thought about suicide multiple times. Writing was her only bright spot in life. She completed her first novel while living on welfare. The first Harry Potter book was refused by 12 publishing houses. An editor in Bloomsbury only agreed to publish the book after giving it to his then eight-year-old daughter, who loved the chapter so much that she asked for more straight away. The Harry Potter books have ended up earning more than 200 million pounds in the UK alone. It goes without saying that those 12 publishing houses regret some of their choices now, right? Number six, the Changs. You've probably owned a few clothing items from Forever 21, one of the most popular clothing stores in the US, worth more than $4 billion. However, how many of you guys are aware that its founders were once struggling immigrants from Korea? South Korea, to be more exact. Husband and wife Du Wan Chang and Jin Suk Chang moved to the USA in 1981. They had so much difficulty coping and adjusting to the new way of life that at one point, Du Wan Chang worked three jobs. He worked as a janitor, as a gas station attendant, and a barista in a coffee shop. After three years in 1984, they were able to save enough money and open up their first Forever 21 store in Los Angeles on April 21st, 1984. This particular store is still in operation, but it actually is still called the chain's original name, Fashion 21. In its first year in operation, Fashion 21 sales totaled $700,000, which is a huge success by anyone's standard. By 2013, there were more than 480 stores and revenues of $3.7 billion. Originally, Forever 21 only sold clothes for women, but later expanded to sell menswear. Most Forever 21 stores now sell clothes for both men and women. As of 2017, the company is still a private company that's still run by family members. Hey, that's the best way to do business these days, just like Chick-fil-A. You don't have to listen to any BS from your shareholders, right? Anyways, the Chang success story is the quintessential American dream to many immigrants. Come to the US, build a business, and stack that money. Number 5. Oprah Winfrey the whole world went crazy for The Oprah Winfrey Show, a show that aired for 25 years from 1986 until 2011. In case you didn't know, Oprah Winfrey is a world known not only for her talk show, but for her philanthropic work as well. Harvard awarded her an honorary PhD to her and President Obama awarded her the Presidential Medal of Freedom as well, just to name a couple of accolades. It's been estimated that she's worth almost $3 billion, a figure that's pretty much insane for anyone. Here's a fun little fact. Oprah is actually named Orpah. She's named after the biblical figure in the Book of Ruth, but people mispronounce it regularly and Oprah stuck. 
Oprah grew up in rural Mississippi in poverty so bad that she used to wear potato sack instead of clothes until she was six. She lived with her grandmother, who was very strict. Oprah learned how to read by the time she was three. Even from an extremely young age, she felt surprisingly comfortable doing public speaking. She managed to earn $500 for a public speech she gave when she was 12. Wow, I thought I had a good hustle at age 12. Gotta say, big ups to Oprah on that one. In 1960, at the age of six, Oprah moved to Milwaukee, Wisconsin with her mother, who found a job working long hours as a maid. Around this time, her mom gave birth to another daughter, Oprah's younger half-sister, Patricia. By 1962, her mom was having difficulty raising both her and her baby half-sister, so Oprah was temporarily sent to live with her dad in Nashville, Tennessee. While Oprah was in Nashville, her mom gave birth to a third daughter who was put up for adoption and also later named Patricia. Oprah didn't learn that she had a second half-sister until 2010. It's been stated multiple times that Oprah was molested during her childhood and teenage years. In fact, she got pregnant at the age of 14 and had a son who died in his infancy. After being sent to live with her father, she managed to get a job as a radio host while still in high school. Oprah has shared that her father is responsible for literally saving her life and getting her back on the right track. Under his supervision, she quickly started excelling at school. Even back in her youth, she was praised for the emotional approach she used to practice with her radio guests, and which later on won so big of a TV audience. And fast forward to 2017, and Oprah Winfrey is a media mogul who's the richest African American in the world who's generously helping those in need all over the world. Hey, who can hate on that? Number four, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Everyone knows Arnold Schwarzenegger as the governor of California and Mr. Olympia who managed to walk the path from a poor Austrian immigrant to basically whatever he wanted in life. Even though he's as successful as he can be in everything he's ever decided to do, life wasn't always easy for him. He was born in Austria to some very strict parents. He oftentimes recalled that he'd be hit with a rod, which pretty much would now be considered child abuse and not just tough love, at least in the eyes of the law. Unfortunately, his father had a very strong preference for Arnold's brother, which stemmed from unfounded suspicion that Arnold wasn't his biological child. Their relationship was so bad that he attended neither his father nor his brother's funeral. Their family lived in relative poverty. Arnold said that one of the highlights of his life in Austria was when they were first brought a fridge. At 14, he started an intensive training program to begin his bodybuilding career studied psychology at 15 to learn more about the power of mind over body, and at 17, officially started his competitive career. During a speech in 2001, Arnold said, quote, My own plan formed when I was 14 years old. My father had wanted me to be a police officer like he was. My mother wanted me to go to trade school. Schwarzenegger moved to the U.S. in 1968 at the age of 21 thanks to his bodybuilding skills. A not-so-well-known fact is the thing that he barely spoke some English when he first came. He's admitted struggling with anxiety during his first years in the U.S. and that he managed to cope only with the support of his friends who introduced him to meditation. It was his time as a bodybuilder that taught Arnold what it took to be a champion as a bodybuilder and life in general. His entire life was dedicated to being Mr. Olympia, and it was this application of relentless focus which helped him to achieve whatever it was he put his mind to. His first major movie breakthrough was in 1982 with the movie Conan the Barbarian. And, well, pretty much, the rest is history. Number 3. Roman Abramovich Roman Abramovich is a Russian billionaire and businessman best known as the owner of the Chelsea Soccer Club. In 2016, it's been estimated that Abramovich is worth more than $7 billion and has been rated among the richest people in the world. A fun fact, this dude is so rich he owns the largest private yacht in the world. However, the now business mogul was once an orphan. His parents died when he was four and he was left living with his uncle and grandmother. He got his chance for success when he received a large gift from his in-laws for his wedding. In order to start a business career, he dropped out of college and tried his best at every chance he got. At one point, he was even selling rubber ducks out of an apartment. Hey, that's life as an entrepreneur. Fail and fail again till you find something that works. His success started when he first took over an oil giant for some cheap money. Then, he continued flipping investments for larger and larger companies. 
that tough love life was first giving him had to pay off at some point. Either you let it beat you down or you learn from it and get smarter. Number two, Chris Gardner. If you've seen the movie The Pursuit of Happiness, then you've probably heard about Chris Gardner, a businessman and a motivational speaker who beat all that was stacked against him. He's now worth more than $60 million. During his childhood years, he lived with an abusive stepdad who didn't prove to be a very good role model. He ended up in foster care several times, and in his adulthood, he changed career paths multiple times. One of his jobs, Gardner worked as a research lab assistant at UCSF and at the Veterans Hospital. However, his position as a research lab assistant paid only about $8,000 a year, which wasn't enough for him to support a live-in girlfriend and his son. Because of his situation, he was determined to be successful in business. He was only inspired to become a stockbroker when he saw a dude in a suit stepping out of a Ferrari. The man himself was a stockbroker. Well, I guess we're all better off that that dude wasn't a dope boy from the corner. Anyways, years later, he bought his own Ferrari from Michael Jordan and put a license plate on it that said, Not MJ. While struggling with his career, there was an incident involving his then-girlfriend, Jackie Medina, who's also the mother of his son, which resulted in him to be taken to jail. After he was released, he returned home to an empty apartment and was left with virtually nothing. He only had the clothes on him and managed to get into a training program only with those same clothes. With no experience, no college education, virtually no connections, and with the same casual outfit he had been wearing on the day he was taken into custody, Gardner gained a position in Dean Witter Reynolds' stock brokerage training program. However, this position offered no salary. Obviously, he was unable to meet his living expenses. Gardner worked to become a top trainee at Dean Witter Reynolds as he became one of the hardest working employees at his company. He arrived at the office early and stayed late each day, persistently making calls to prospective clients with his goal being 200 calls per day. His perseverance paid off when, in 1982, Gardner passed his Series 7 exam on the first try and became a full employee of the firm. Gardner struggled the most while raising his son while being homeless. About four months after Medina disappeared with their son, she returned and left his son with Gardner. By then, he was earning a small salary and was able to afford rooming in a flop house. He took his son back, but he had a big problem. The rooming house where he lived didn't allow kids. Although he was employed, Gardner and his son secretly struggled with homelessness while he saved money for a rental house in Berkeley. None of Gardner's co-workers knew that he and his son were homeless for nearly a year. Gardner often scrambled to place his child in daycare. He stood in soup kitchens and slept wherever he and his son could find safety. In his office hours, at flop houses, motels, parks, airports, on public transport, and even in a locked bathroom at a BART station. They did this for almost a year. A year! Just unbelievable! In 1987, Gardner established a new company with startup capital of $10,000 and a single piece of furniture. A wooden desk that doubled as the family dinner table. The rest is pretty much a success story. He ended up selling his stake in his company in 2006 in a multi-million dollar deal. As of 2017, Gardner travels for more than 200 days per year and gives motivational speeches around the country. Good to see this man is still doing well, but I gotta say, if you really want something, you really don't need motivation because if you do, you really don't want it. Number one, Cristiano Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo is often described as one of the best soccer players of all time. He's been awarded the FIFA Player of the Year award three times and has scored more than 500 goals in his lifetime. As of April 2017, he plays for the soccer club Real Madrid from Spain and is the captain of Portugal's national team. His annual salary only from the Real Madrid club is $50 million per year, and that's not including the bonuses. Not too bad for a 32-year-old, right? However, you'd be surprised to learn that life didn't always go so smoothly for him. He was born on the island of Madeira, Portugal, to a low-income family. His father was a gardener and his mother worked various low-profile jobs. Ronaldo himself mentioned that he grew up in poverty, living in a house with a tin roof where he had to share a room with his three older brothers and sisters. His father used to drink excessively, in fact, so much so that he died from a kidney disease in 2005. His mother struggled a lot to bring up a family with four kids that she didn't pick between jobs. 
Sometimes she'd work day and night shifts as a chef or a cleaning lady just to support the family. However, Ronaldo's parents were able to recognize that Ronaldo had special talents. It was clear by the age of 10, he would be winning big time. He was so passionate about soccer that he would only eat, sleep, and train all the time. By age 14, Ronaldo believed he had the ability to play semi-professionally and agreed with his mother to stop his education in order to focus entirely on soccer. However, only a year later, he was diagnosed with a racing heart, a condition that could have forced him to give up playing soccer. Faced with the possibility of mediocrity in his life, he decided to undergo an operation in which a laser was used to cauterize the affected area of his heart. Yeah, not gonna lie, that takes some balls. And get this, he was discharged from the hospital hours after the procedure and he resumed training only a few days later. I really don't want to bore you guys with the details, but basically talent and hard work took him to the top. Today, he's one of the best soccer players in the game, if not the best, but we can't just throw Lionel Messi out of this conversation that easily. Here's what's World next. World War II escalated. Someone needed to stand up to Hitler, and that man was Winston Churchill. Granted, the political environment was actually pretty complicated at the time, but without Churchill's leadership, the UK might not have survived the war. While he was many things during his life, a writer,